Hello again students, this is Professor Krauss with lecture number 19 where we're going to talk about the afterlife and what Christians believe about both heaven and hell. Let's open in prayer. Father, thank you for a great semester already and I look forward to closing out uh, with some uh, strong uh, lectures and some important information and things for us to think about including the idea of an afterlife, heaven and hell. Lord, I thank you so much for Jesus. I thank you for his life and death and resurrection, his promise that anyone who believes will live forever with him in heaven. Uh, help me to be uh, clear and helpful and encouraging in this lecture. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, heaven and hell, the uh, final lecture for week number five. The question of, is there life after death, is one that humanity has thought about since the beginning of time, and it's one of the most important questions we all need to ask and answer. Because the truth is, what we believe about the afterlife is going to affect the way we live uh, here and now. Uh, so let's begin by thinking through what the Bible says about heaven and hell. They are all too often thought of in unbiblical ways. I have talked to many people who explain to me what they think heaven uh, or hell is like, and rather than being from any sort of credible source uh, or like the Bible, um, many of them come from something like movies. They've watched movies, they've read stories, and so they formed their idea of what heaven is like and what hell is like from that. Um, Others um, hold up that specific sins uh, are seen as worse than others, and if you commit these sins, then you go to hell, but if you only commit these sins, then you would have the chance to go to heaven. So we are going to look at what the Bible says about both of these places and why it is important. Um, you know, just as a opening thought about heaven and hell, you know, people often talk about, well, the Old Testament God is very straightforward and judgmental and mean. There's really no grace. But we really, really like Jesus. You know, he seems more calm and kind and patient. But Jesus talks about hell much more than he ever talks about heaven. He gives many warnings about what hell is going to be like and how we can escape the fires of hell. And so hopefully this information will be helpful if you ever wondered what Christians believe about heaven and hell. Let's start with hell. The two words used most commonly in, in the Bible to describe hell are Hades and Gehenna. And, and both of these words are used to, de to describe a place uh, that is said to be full of torment um, and it is the opposite of heaven. So the way heaven's described, the opposite is hell. Jesus even warns his followers that they should fear the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Uh, and so, you know, again, as Jesus is teaching about why he came to earth and what he was going to do, and he teaches about love, he teaches about judgment, he also warns us about the severity of, um, and the consequences of rejecting him and going to hell. Jesus claims, and this is so important, that those who do not repent, that word repent means to turn from. You're heading one way, you realize your error, you turn from your sin, and you go towards Jesus. Jesus says that those who do not repent of their sins and refuse to be saved through faith they will be thrown into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So again, it, it is a warning about what will happen if you do not turn to Jesus, but it's also a description of how bad it's going to be. Um, the Bible tells us that hell is originally um, created as a place of torment and suffering for Satan and his fallen angels. Uh, Satan and his angels who rebelled against God and brought evil and destruction into this world and who continue to rebel against God and continue to, tr to seek to destroy us um, in anything good. So God, uh, Jesus and other biblical authors uh, talk about hell as a place not only for Satan though, but for those who, in a sense, 
fall under Satan's rule, rather than turning to Jesus and surrendering our lives to Him, we continue to follow Satan. So, why do Christians believe that some will spend eternity in heaven and some will spend eternity in hell? Um, This is a very, very important question. And all of it really focuses on belief in Jesus. Hell is set apart for sinners who do not turn from their sin and rebellion against God. Every Christians believe every human being is guilty of sin. Uh, we've all sinned against a loving, holy God who created us. And if we remain in our sin, if we die guilty, meaning that we never turn from our sins and turn to Jesus, um, we will spend eternity in hell. But if we are willing to turn to Christ, uh, Jesus promises that we're forgiven of our sins. We are no longer guilty. We uh, have that relationship with God, and then we will no longer um, have to go to hell for all eternity. Uh, maybe the best question, as uh, Tim Keller brings up, is not how could a loving God send people to hell, right? Some people ask that. How could a loving God send people to hell? Um, because if He loves humanity and died for us and offers us a way to be saved, is it God sending us to hell in one sense, yes, or is it us choosing hell instead of God, right? If 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 you know that you are you have sinned, you've messed up, and you have salvation available to you, but you say no to it, um, isn't it more of us choosing to um, to rebel against God and say no to God rather than just God? If God offers us that opportunity, you know John three sixteen again. We keep on coming back to it because it's that important. For God so loved the world so much that He gave His uh, only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And 3.17 says, For uh, the Son did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save it. So again, it, it is the idea that that God has given us a way. He's giving, uh, given us the ability. He's, he's given us His Son who died on the cross that we can choose Jesus. We can choose, choose salvation, forgiveness, eternal life. Now, at the end of the time, Christians believe that Jesus will return again, this time as Lord and King over all the earth. Um, Because He has conquered all of His enemies, He's conquered sin on the cross, He's conquered death in His resurrection, and He's going to one day conquer Satan in the final battle, Um, there will be a new heaven and new earth, which replaces the current heaven and current earth. We think often of heaven being above us, which the Bible even talks about, you know, in using the the, the language of above and below. Uh, but in reality, you know, our earth is round. And so it's, you know, heaven is very distant, very different than earth where we live. But God promises that one day um, Jesus will come again And when he does, he is going to make all things right. So our world is still filled with injustice and suffering and sin and death. Jesus promises to come again, this this time not as a baby, as he did the first time, but this time as a king and as a ruler, as a judge um, who will judge the world. Those who have trusted in Jesus are, are safe because he has already paid the price for our sins. We will live forever and ever and ever with Him in the new heavens. Um, But those who are found guilty, those who have rejected God, those who have said no to Jesus, they will spend, Jesus says, uh, eternity in hell, while um, those who turn to Him will spend eternity in heaven. This new heaven and new earth is a picture of all corruption from sin and death entirely removed. No more sin, no more death, no more cancer, no more sickness, no more evil. It is all gone. It will be a new place. Whereas, as we read earlier, Jesus warns us about what hell is going to be like. In the new heavens and new earth, where um, we want to be, where where God is going to be, um, if, if you want to pause for a moment and, and read over Revelation 21 and 22, they're the final two chapters of the Bible, It is a picture of what's going to happen. So, 
Uh, let me read. I'm not going to read both these chapters. I'm hoping you will. Uh, but Revelation 21, let me read the opening verses here. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God will be with them as their God." He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor um, crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And so the idea here is that God is is going to be with us. Like that is the great like treasure of heaven. The great treasure of heaven is not seeing loved ones or you know, no more sickness, but the ultimate treasure of heaven is going to be everyone who's believed in Jesus finally getting to be with God. No more sin to hold us back. We'll finally be able to see him face to face, the one who came and died for us. So we finally get to dwell with God forever and ever and ever. The idea, just think about this. Um, we've talked about the intimacy of God and God, how personal he is, but God promises to wipe away every tear. Um, I don't know if that exactly has to, you know, that applying to memories that would cause us to be sad or what. I don't think there's going to be any sadness in heaven um, the way we think about sadness. There's no more death or mourning or crying or pain or sickness ever, ever, ever again. They are all gone. It's just a perfect paradise like the garden in Eden was supposed to be at the very beginning of time. God makes all things new. All sin is punished all injustices are settled. Um, later on, we, you read that all nations will be in heaven. So uh, he- heaven is not a place where just white people or Jewish people or certain people like we might picture in our mind, but people from all nations will be there as they put their faith in Jesus. And the most important thing is Jesus, the Lamb of God, the one who died for us, will be on his throne. Um, and that right there is is the promise that's available to everyone who puts their faith in Jesus. That's what eternal life means. To live with God forever and ever and ever. You know, cartoons and movies picture those when we get to heaven, we're gonna be on clouds and we're gonna be angels. That you know, that is not biblical. Uh, human beings are not angels, nor will they ever be angels according to what Christians believe. Cre- angels are created beings, they have their role. Uh, uh, human beings are created beings. We have our role. Um, but I, I believe, if I had to wager a guess based on what the Bible says and also just thinking through what the Bible as a whole says, I think that our lives are going to be a lot more normal than we think. That the, the new heavens and new earth where Christians will spend all eternity with God is going to be a lot more like the way we live our lives um, you know, only without sin and without pain and those sorts of things, then we really believe. Um, and it's going to go on forever and ever and ever, which is so hard to wrap our minds around because everything we know has a beginning and has an end. But um, on the other hand, of course, you have hell. And one of the biggest differences the Bible says between he- the new heavens and new earth, heaven and hell, is the absence of goodness. That in the new heavens and new earth, everything is going to be perfectly good. And God, who is perfect goodness, will be there. But in hell, there is no goodness. There is no goodness of God there. Like right now, even non-Christians, Christians believe, even non-Christians experience the grace of God. Sunlight, love, all the good blessings that God pours out on all people. But when you get to hell, all that is gone. There's no longer any grace or goodness to to uh, to live in. Why? Because all of goodness is gone. Um, if the, those who live in hell will be those who have rejected God, um, have chosen their their afterlife and where they'll spend afterlife. So um, it's not always the easiest topic because it's not so clear. Um, there are there are many passages that explain, and what we've talked about is is biblical. Um, but also for me, it's heartbreaking to think that that God does love us, and He has made a way, and we 
you know, even right now as a student or someone who watches these videos, you have a choice. You you hear that yes, despite your sin, God loves you and he sent his son Jesus to die so you can believe in him, be saved and spend eternity in the new heavens and new earth instead of eternity in hell. Let me um, close us in prayer as we uh, conclude this lecture. God, I pray for all the students, anyone who might stumble upon these lectures. I pray for this lecture, God, that we would see the truth of your word and afterlife. And the reality is that our the what we believe about the new heavens and new earth, what we believe about hell, what we believe about the afterlife actually does matter. It's going to shape the way that we live our lives. And so, God, I pray that you would help us to to think through and to um, to really look at our lives and, and recognize that, yes, we've all sinned, we've all messed up, we've fallen short of the standard that God has given us, but God has come to us in Jesus, and Jesus loves us. He knows what we've done wrong, He still loves us, and He died for us. That anyone who turns from their sin and believes in Jesus will be saved um, forever and spend eternity with you. So God, please be with the students. Give them ears to hear and eyes to see. Give them minds to understand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As always, if you have any questions or feedback, any pushback, whatever it may be, please feel free to reach out to me uh, through the comments or even uh, by email. God bless.